All right, welcome. We're looking at week 12, the abdomen and pelvis, uh, and with the structures that we can see on some plastic models, we'll go through them. What we've got here is a posterior abdominal wall seen from an anterior point of view. Here in the middle, we have the inferior vena cava and the aorta, and of course we have kidneys either side. But the structures we're interested in are some of the muscles that are around the place. First one to have a look for is this one, which is psoas major. And on this model, you can just see the tendon here and the muscle belly here of cells minor. So it is present. It can be a little tricky to see, but it is definitely there. So there's the tendon, there's the muscle belly. So there's minor. And you can see major is, has muscle fibers either side of cells minor there. Uh, and of course, lateral to cells major and minor, we have iliacus. And just above iliacus, attaching to the iliac crest here, is quadratus lumborum. Now you can't see all of it there, the kidneys are in the way a bit. Uh, on the left hand side of this model, we can see a bit more of it down here um, because the left kidney is a bit higher than the right. Then what we can see if we look at the anterolateral abdominal wall here, we can see that there are three layers. And so the most internal layer course it's going to be transversus abdominis and we can see the inside of that here we can see the muscle fibers are running in a horizontal or transverse direction there and then we can see there are two other layers so there's the first or most internal layer transversus abdominis then in the middle we have the internal oblique and here we have the external oblique so that's what we can see from that point of view but we'll get a better look at them if we have a look from an anterior point of view. So here we've got the front part of that model where we can see the anterior abdominal wall much more clearly now, of course, we can see it. Um, so on towards the top of the screen here, we've got a more superficial layer. So this is the external oblique muscle. So these are the muscle fibers. Note that they're all pointing in the same sort of direction. They're all traveling inferiorly as they travel medially. And then this kind of silvery part here, or grey part here, that's the aponeurosis, or the tendon, the big broad flat tendon of the external oblique. And it's covering the rectus abdominis. So we can see the rectus abdominis here quite clearly. We can see it through the tendon, or aponeurosis, of the external oblique here. Now on the other side, down towards the bottom of the screen, here we've got the internal oblique. And notice that these fibres, the more superior ones, are running in the opposite direction to the external. So these ones, as they travel medially, are travelling superiorly. But notice that as we travel down the internal oblique, first the fibres become kind of horizontal, so running in a transverse direction, but then lower down, they even start heading in the opposite direction. They even start heading inferiorly as they travel medially. So please remember that when you're looking at specimens, if you can only see one layer, and you might only be able to see one layer on a specimen, of course, depending on what's been removed, if the fibres uh, are running inferiorly here, just in the inferior part, it doesn't necessarily tell you which muscle it is because they both have similar fibre direction. But what will tell you is notice that with the external oblique, it's a tendon by the time you get to here, whereas on the internal, there are still muscle fibres at that level. So if the muscle fibres are coming right down near the, the hip bone, then you're looking at the internal oblique. If you can see an aponeurosis there, then it's the external. Okay, now in between the internal and external oblique, in the closer to the midline here, of course, we have rectus abdominis. We can see four um, parts, four sections of muscle tissue there with tenderness intersections in between. So that's kind of nice to see those um, parallel muscle fibres there. We can also see the linear alba in the midline, and that's where the aponeuroses of the internal, sorry, the external and internal obliques are going to cross over and go, some fibres go in front, some go behind, the rectus abdominis, uh, and then they, they all kind of join up in the middle where they cross over, like uh, making an X kind of shape, which makes this quite a strong tendon there in the midline. Then laterally, this depression out here is the linear semilunaris. 
So that's where the aponeurosis of the external oblique starts and it's the lateral border there of the rectus abdominis is the other boundary of it. So that's the linear semilunaris. So linear alba in the middle, semilunaris laterally. Of course the linear alba runs from the xiphoid process down through the umbilicus, so it's right in the midline. And then inferiorly, and this model is really wonderful for this, inferiorly we have the pyramidalis, which is a small muscle. Most people have it, but it's very small. And there is at least one specimen where you can clearly identify it, so make sure that you do. But it's this small part here of rectus abdominis right at the bottom, fibres running in a slightly oblique direction instead of straight up and down. Now, if we turn this model over, we can then look at the posterior abdominal wall and again we can see that we've got um, transversus abdominis both sides and you can see that the fibers are horizontal all the way down so that no matter where you look at it fibers are running in a transverse direction so that one will always tell you if that's the one you're looking at if you can only see one we can see rectus abdominis here we can't see the muscle fibers up here though this is the posterior rectus sheath so it's made up of the aponeuroses of the transversus abdominis and the internal oblique. But once you get to this line here, which is the arcuate line, once you get to that line there, these fibres from here down then travel in front of the rectus rather than travelling behind it. So on some specimens, if we have a specimen that, that where you can see, and, and we do, we have several, where you can see the posterior abdominal wall, uh, or a posterior view, sorry, of the anterior abdominal wall, where you can see that um, this is actually what it will look like. The fascia will just end because after that, inferior to this line, the fibres all go anterior to the rectus abdominis. So it's an incomplete rectus sheath posteriorly. It's the arcuate line is always going to be inferior to the umbilicus. So obviously this is rectus abdominis we're looking at here, and I think that's about it. <laughs>